I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Amen. just a willing vessel that you can work through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. Just a willing vessel that you can work through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. I will not be ashamed of you, Father. I will not be ashamed of you, Lord. I will not be ashamed of your spirit. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to worship you. So burn, fire burn. In every heart, blow, winds blow. Purify our hearts with your fire. Yes. I ask that you take a coal off the altar of heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And place it on my lips. Mm -hmm. let, it, let it not be my word. May your glory be seen. I promise to get out of the way so you can do what you want. Have your way. Have your way. Have. 
your way. I have a word for you today. I'm probably not going to finish this sermon. But just like that Shunammite woman, she built a place in her life for the holy man to stay in her very home. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last week, about creating a mercy seat for the power of God to be in your life, for God to live in your life. Mm -hmm. See, if she wouldn't have been quickened in her heart to do something for the holy man, See, back then, women were second-class citizens. They didn't have audience with their husbands like you think they do. They were property. They weren't partners. Aren't you glad you ladies don't, aren't property now? <laughs> How many know some men still try to teach their, treat their women like that? Yes. Shame on you. Yeah. She's a gift from heaven. Amen. True, man. She was fashioned by God's own hands for you. And that's how you treat God's creation for you? Shame on you. That'll be a Mother's Day sermon, by the way. But this woman ran to her husband and said, we need to build a place on the wall for him, a room. Little did she know she was preparing herself to see the greatest miracle that she ever would see. And not just for her, but everybody in her household, all their employees, all the workers, all the people she's friends with, the ladies, and all the men were going to know what happened that day. See, she was promised by the holy man this time next year you will have a child and it'll be a son. Yeah. She said, no, my Lord. Don't promise me something. My, my husband's an old man. We don't do those things anymore. <laughs> Obviously they did. Because she was blessed with a son. And he grew in stature and he grew up a little bit. And one day he was out in the field with the reapers, with his daddy. He said, Daddy, my head, my head. And he told one of his workers, take him to his mama. Hurry up, take him to his mama. I ain't got time for this. So the child sat in mama's lap till about the noon hour. And he died. What's the first thing she did after that happened? She laid the child in that bed in that very room she built for the holy man. She had all these other rooms, I'm sure, in her house. But where did she put it? Put the body of her child in the holy man's room on the holy man's bed. That's faith. Let me teach you something about her faith. She even called out to one of her people and said, go tell my husband I need a, a, one of the fastest young men and I need a donkey. And they asked, is all is well? And she goes, all is good. She didn't freak out and say, oh, it's horrible. What did she say? It's all good. Amen. It's all good. It's all good. How many, when you hear that, you know it's a lie sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you did. But what she was doing is she was calling into existence what wasn't happening in that moment as it were. By faith, all is good. I had an opportunity to hear a story yesterday, and it was an amazing story of suffering. And then restoration. It was all good. Even when it wasn't. Yes. 
even when my I went through my story, it was all good even when it wasn't. Even the outcome is all good, even though it wasn't. Do you know why? I consider it all joy if it honors the Father in heaven. If it's his will. See, she wasn't going to take no for an answer. She was like Noah. Yeah, everything's yes and amen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. She didn't know that back then, but she was having faith that things were all good. Yeah. She knew she had to get to the holy man. Yeah. And the, the husband's like, it's not, it's not the Sabbath, it's not this, it's not the full moon. It, it's none of this stuff. And she goes, it's all good, it's all right. I'm going to go have a chat with the holy man. So I'm sure she will whoop in that donkey like, get going, let's go. How many of you have ever pushed the gas pedal? Let's go, right? <laughs> I did that yesterday. I had to get out in traffic, and so I pulled out my Cal or my, my Seattle-type driving and <laughs> let her rip to the chip, <laughs> and she took off while my truck was gone. And the kids that were in the back seat started laughing. They are like, woo this is fun. <laughs> we had fun. But God's good, though. Think about this in one way. This is the fun part. Think of it. Is that she knew if she got to the holy man, all would be well. Yep. She had faith. Mm -hmm. How come some of us come so short of, yeah. we have faith, right to the edge. and it only goes to the veil, and we never push past. And step into his presence. Step into his reality. Yeah. Step into his glory. We come so short. We're actually cutting ourselves off from what God has for us. This lady wasn't going to take no for an answer. Because right. there was a promise. Right. See, when God has a promise... On your life. Amen. Yep. He has a promise that he will pour out his spirit like it's never been poured out on the face of this planet. He has a promise. I have not seen that yet. Have you? I have not seen where Jesus said, Greater things will you do in my name than I've ever done than I ever did when I was here. Greater right. things. Mm -hmm. I have not seen the dead rise yet. I've heard, I've seen myself. I have not seen the dead, dead rise. And I've seen ears open. Yeah. I've seen teeth filled with pure gold. Yeah. Beautiful, pure gold that you can't, it's the most amazing look. When you see it coming in, it was literally filling that too. Mm. I've seen eyes open. I've heard a mute be able to speak. Untied his tongue. My eyes were crossed from birth. I'm a living reality. Yeah. No, a donkey didn't kick me in the head. <laughs> There's the power of God. My dad was not a Christian. He was a sinner if I ever heard one. And he was there and he heard this preacher was coming to this church. It was a healer. My dad ran up to the front and wanted me to be healed. He had faith. Yeah. See, and the preacher prayed the first time nothing happened. So my dad said, I'm going to watch it happen. Mm. Yeah. He saw my eyes straighten out perfectly. Yeah. <coughs> Perfect. I only wear glasses for very fine print. And I'm 50, and everybody in my family has to wear glasses. Hallelujah. <laughs> By faith, things happen. Yes. Yep. How big is your faith? Yep. See, David did, he had faith. What did he do? He says, I ain't going to let that stinking, dirty mouth fool talk about God's people like that. That's my people. How can you ding dong sit here and take this from this stinky little turkey? Yeah. Well, he's huge. Why are you so scared of him? Yeah. 
Because David knew greater the, is he that is in me than he that is in that giant. This lady, she's sitting there and she goes into the holy man and he sends out his servant and says, oh, well, 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 you know, it's all well. She goes, all is good. So she talks to the holy man and he comes. <coughs> First thing he does is lay his body on that child. Yep. Hand to hand, foot to foot, leg to leg, chest to chest, mouth to mouth, and laid on him. Yep. And the child got warm. I am standing there and I'm laying on you guys hand to hand, foot to foot, mouth to mouth, because you're cold in the Spirit of God. God wants to burn a fire in your heart. He wants you to have faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Yep. He wants you to have faith like David and Goliath. He wants you to have faith like Billy Graham said, what do they have? What do I have to say to them? And God says, do it. Oral Roberts had faith enough to believe in the name of Jesus and pray it. Yep. They shall be healed. Yep. Pat Atchison will be known in heaven. Might not be known on earth my faith and my God is not going to fail me I may not be a TV preacher I may never be something that I don't want to be anyways but I'm something when yeah. my father's in my life yes Amen. you're something to the father yes you are. you're a special someone okay. and he wants to move on your heart he wants to light a fire in you that burns brightly. See, he wants a bonfire. He don't want a kindling of a candle. Yeah. He wants you to be so on fire for him that you cannot extinguish those flames. And then you're hungry more for him than you are for yourself. This is not exactly how I was planning to preach today. But I told Jerry and I told Pastor Matt, <coughs> this is not going to be a typical day today. Well, I'm going to ask a deep, dark question inside every single one of us have to, has to answer. How hungry are we for his glory? Mm. How stuck to your traditions are you? They easily snare us. How hungry are for your, his glory to fall in this place and in your life mm -hmm. and in your home? How hungry are you that it doesn't matter what people think, even if you look stupid? Mm -hmm. You're going to let the power of God move yeah. in you, through you. How hungry are you? You can sit there and draw and do your knitting and you can do your phone play and whatever you want to do. That's fine. But you're missing out on what God's trying to do in your heart. Yep. It actually can be looked at as defiance to what the Holy Spirit's trying to do in your life. Mm -hmm. 
See, God has a simple question that he wants to ask you today. Are you willing to accept my glory? Are you willing to do what it takes to die to yourself, to let him be more and you less? So my challenge for you again this week is Lord, let it not be my will, but yours. And God, the other challenge with this is, God, fill me with your glory. If you pray those two prayers today and the rest of this week, and God challenges you to invite people to come, because if you don't invite, they won't come. 80% of new attendees come because they were invited to come. The reason we don't see a lot of new people is because we're obviously not doing our job. Pastor, it's uncomfortable. Hmm? It's all right. We can use excuses, but God doesn't. When we stand at the end of the day in front of Him when our last breath ends and we stand in front of Him and we have to do the judgment day, He'll say, what's your excuse? I don't have to answer for it, for you. We all have to answer for ourselves, don't we? Right. Let's let God challenge us to be something that we're not, to take us out of our comfort zone, to let his glory be in this place, to let it not be our will, but his will. And let's move forward in him. Amen. Are you willing to let that love first speak because he first loved you? Will you love God enough to let him be God and who he's supposed to be in your life? The fullness of God. And so many times we cut him short. I'm only willing to go this far, Lord. And he's saying no. Come in. And we press into me deep into me. Go past the outer veil court. Go past the inner courts. Get to the sanctuary of his presence. Mm -hmm. I heard it explained as this is just one chamber of praise of many. Yeah. If we can get into just one of those chambers of praise and worship. How much glory can he show? After all, why are we here? Are we here to look good? Just to keep the building open? Are we here to inhabit have him inhabit the praises of his people. Yeah. Challenging us. Yeah. I love you. The altars are open. I would suggest that we start using them as they're intended, not to sit there, but to pray yes. and seek his face.